This task is security categorization. In this task, we're going to categorize the information types on the system as well as the system itself so we can define the correct controls to implement to protect the system. So join us in this video. In this video, we'll be discussing task C2, security categorization. Categorize the system and document the security categorization results is the task C2. Potential inputs include the risk management strategy, organizational risk tolerance, authorization boundary for the system uh, and information, organization and system level risk assessment results, information types processed, stored, or transmitted by the system, list of security and privacy requirements allocated to the system, system elements, and environment of operation, organizational authority or purpose for operating the system, business impact analysis or critical analysis, information about missions, business functions, and mission business processes supported by the system. Expected outputs for this task are impact levels determined for each information type and for each security objective, that's confidentiality, integrity, and availability, often referred to as the CIA triad, but officially we call them the security objectives. Security categorization based on the high watermark of information type impact levels, and we'll talk about that more. Primary responsibility for this task is the information owner, the information steward, and the system owner. Supporting roles include the senior accountable official for risk management, the risk executive function, the chief information officer, the senior agency information security officer, the senior agency official for privacy, the authorizing official, the authorizing official's designated representative, the system security officer, and the system privacy officer. A lot of people support in this task. This does align with the SDLC. It aligns with a new system initiation or concept requirements and definition. And for an existing system, it aligns with operations and maintenance. It aligns with the cybersecurity framework as well in IDAM1, asset management. Physical devices and systems within the organization are inventoried. It also aligns with IDAM2, asset management. Software platforms and applications within the organization are inventoried. IDAM3, asset management. Organizational communication and data flows are mapped. IDAM4, asset management. IDAM4, Asset Management, External Information Systems are Catalogued, and IDAM5, Asset Management, Resources, including hardware, devices, data, time, personnel, and software are prioritized based on their classification, criticality, and business value. Security categorization determinations consider potential adverse impacts to organizational operations organizational assets, individuals, other organizations, and the nation resulting from the loss of confidentiality, integrity, or availability of information. That's that security objectives. So we want to categorize the information system. We categorize first the information and then the overall information system, determine the level of impact on each of these security objectives, and that will help determine what could be the potential adverse impact should any of those security objectives be compromised. Organizations have flexibility in conducting a security categorization using either FIPS 200 to establish a single impact level for a system based on the high watermark concept for other than national security systems, or organizations can use CNSSI 1253 to establish three impact values that may vary for each of the security objectives of confidentiality, integrity, and availability for national security systems. So what we're saying is systems other than national security systems can have one categorization rating overall for the entire system. So for one system, it could be rated as moderate. That could be the level for the entire system. So all the controls would be selected at the moderate level. If you have a national security system, then you're going to have a classification for each of the three objectives of confidentiality, integrity, and availability. And it's important we describe these objectives in that order, 
confidentiality first, followed by integrity, followed by availability. That way, when we read out the impact levels, we understand what is the level for each. So unlike the first example, a national security system would get a rating for confidentiality, that may be high or moderate or low, an impact rating for integrity, again, high, moderate, or low, and for availability, high, moderate, or low. So that same system as a national security system, instead of being moderate, it may be something like low, moderate, moderate, or low, moderate, high, where low would be confidentiality, moderate would be integrity, and high would be availability. So we'll talk about that more in detail later. Security categorization process is carried out by the system owner and the information owner or steward in cooperation and collaboration with senior leaders and executives with mission, business function, or risk management responsibilities. Cooperation and collaboration helps to ensure that individual systems are categorized based on the mission and business objectives of the organization. We wanna make sure we categorize the systems the same across the entire organization and we want to make sure that the categorization is actually aligned with the mission and business objectives of the organization. So those systems that are more critical to the mission and business objective get a, a more detailed look and normally are rated at a higher level than those systems that are not su directly supporting the mission or the business objectives. The system owner and information owner or steward consider the results from the security assessment and the privacy risk assessment when the system processes PII or personally identifiable information as part of the security categorization decision. The decision is consistent with the risk management strategy. The results of the categorization process influence the selection of security controls for the system. Exactly. So when we get our final categorization, that is going to define which controls we start with before we start tailoring those control sets. Security categorization information is documented in the system security plan or included as an attachment to the plan and can be cross-referenced in a privacy plan when the system processes PII. And this is what we talked about in the last task. When we developed the system information, we may not have had the categorization at that point. And that's why that system security plan is referred to as a living document. We can now go back and update that document with the categorization of the information and the system overall. The security categorization results for the system can be further refined by the organization to facilitate an impact level prioritization of systems with the same impact level. And we did that back in task prepare six or P6, where we said maybe the organization has a lot of moderate impact systems, so maybe in those cases, we have high moderate, moderate moderate, and low moderate system so we can further stratify that moderate level. Results from the impact level prioritization conducted by the organization can be used to help system owners in control selection and tailoring decisions. And again, those high moderate systems maybe get less tailoring, less removal of controls, for example, um, than those systems that are low moderate. So in essence, a high moderate system may have a lot more controls than a low moderate system, even though they're both moderate level systems. References for this task include FIPS 199 and 200 and special publications 830, 39, 59, 60 volume 1, 60 volume 2, 160 volume 1, as well as IR 8179, CNSSI 1253, and the NIST cybersecurity framework. This module we discussed task C2, inputs and outputs, roles and responsibilities, SDLC and cybersecurity framework alignment, potential impact, organizational flexibility, collaboration, risk assessment and management, impact level prioritization, and references. If any of this doesn't look familiar to you, go back and watch those parts of the video again. However, remember in the lab, we're going to go into another video where we talk about actually categorizing information types and the information system, as well as a handout where you will go on and categorize information types and an information system yourself, and we'll check you to see if you're right. If you're not in the lab, then this video makes sense to you. 
on to the next video and we'll see you there.